Welcome in, everyone, to the Talking Kentucky Post Game Show. My name is Coleman Scott, and joining me tonight is Brad Harvey, as always, on the Kentucky Football Post Game Shows here on Talking Kentucky. As the Cats get a win yet again, uh, not a win that we're necessarily satisfied with yet again, probably, but Kentucky beats Akron 35-3. to We're 3-0, and and as we say, that's all that matters. Um, but I think Kentucky left a lot to be desired yet again today. Um, you know, we, we've played these three non-conference games at the beginning of the year, um, beating Ball State, beating Eastern Kentucky, and then tonight beating Akron. And sort of the real season starts with conference play opening up uh, with Vanderbilt next week, who actually Brad just told me right before the show started, uh, just lost <laughs> to UNLV. Um, so... Yeah. That uh, even more pressure on us that we got to play well in that game. We can't drop that game to Vandy. Uh, we sh- we should should be all right. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about tonight, Brad. Um, what are your, what are your big takeaways? You kind of feel the same as I do that Kentucky sort of left a lot on the field tonight. Oh yeah, I think they left a lot on the table tonight. To be honest with you, in my opinion, the score at the very least should have been fifty-two to six. I will give them six because we had a turnover late and they missed a 30 some yard field goal. So, yeah, um, I I think that uh, we definitely left at the very least 17 points on the table. Um, And it's, it was stuff that, I mean, just stuff that we beat ourselves on. Absolutely. That's the name of the game. We 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 had a still beating ourselves. Yeah, we had a touchdown yep. called back for a holding penalty that basically was just the center just reaching and grabbing the guy's jersey. I mean, you know, anybody catches that. Um, we had a fumble inside the 10-yard line that we were clearly driving on on a play early in the game, um, which was going to be a score. And then we got a muffed punt and got the ball to 35-yard line on the second series of the game. And did Zippo, nada, nothing with the ball, moved yep. it nowhere. Actually, we went back, I think, one or two yards <clears throat> on three plays. And then we kick a 53-yard field goal, <laughs> and it goes through the upright. And I'll be damned if we don't have a uh, – uh, uh, penalty on it of uh, delay a game that that was the name and of the how game do you have, how do you have a penalty of delay of game on your own <laughs> bill goal man brad's coming in hot with the uh with, gotta, with the... <laughs> you got three coaches sitting there i mean how does yeah. that happen no Are, i agree with you i mean that's the coaches or whatever you know that's I mean, my big I, takeaway from tonight is that you know we are still beating ourselves, and we were we. I, you know, you got coaches sitting on the sideline. How does that happen? Do, do do they know what a timeout is? I mean, it just how seems do you like there's this. Happen? Well, the, you know, the way I sort of look at the season so far is we have the ability, we have the pieces to be really good. I believe that before the season started, and I still believe that right now. But the thing is. Um, we're just beating ourselves. We're shooting ourselves in the foot um, on, in all three phases at times. Um, and uh, even even from a coaching standpoint, like you were just talking about with the field goal, you know, that there are things that need to be cleaned up um, I mean, in every area. You know it's so. a 53-yarder. You know you're running your, your field goal team out. You know he's got to line it up, and he's got to get it perfect to kick a 53-yarder. And he does it. And I'll be damned if you're not if you're sitting there just not watching the clock or, or whatever. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't understand how you let that happen as a as a coach. I mean, as a coach, as a player, I mean, I don't understand how you just let that happen. I, I really don't. 
We got some people down here in the comments. Josh Hart says, what's going on? Go Big Blue. You know, that's kind of sums up how we all feel. It's like, man, we, we won with 3-0, but like, what, what's going on with these things, you know, things beating ourselves, stuff like that. Josh Hart says, they covered, and then he puts the little emoji saying, uh, I'm hesitant to say that, sort of, which uh, sums up all of our minds right now. Claude Harris says, good win. Um, and Josh says Tennessee lost, so that's a great thing. You know, there's always the silver lining in Tennessee losing. That shocked me. I did not think Tennessee was going to go down there and lose. I thought they were going to cover tonight, if anything, because it was only a five and a half point spread. I thought, well, sure, you know, surely Tennessee will cover that. They go down there and get blown out by Florida, which is crazy. Well, if we're going to talk about the Tennessee stuff, we're all Kentucky <laughs> fans here, probably. Okay. So I'm yep. so tired of Tennessee fans giving us shit over beating us all the time. I'm sick of it. The next yep. time, the next time that a Tennessee fan tries to give you some crap, okay? Yep. Tennessee is 3 and 28 now against their two biggest rivals, Florida and Tennessee and and Alabama. Okay. Did I hear that they haven't won in Gainesville in 22 they, years? They have not. It's going to be 22 now. They have not won in the swamp since 2003. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That's They've crazy. They've only won in the swamp five times ever. That's ever. hard to believe. That's hard. To, I mean, okay. we've won more than that, haven't we, down there? We've we've won the last two times we've yeah. been in the swamp. Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. And and so I just want if you're a Kentucky fan and a Tennessee fan is trying to give you some crap, <laughs> Tennessee is now two and fourteen in their last sixteen games against Florida. They're one and fourteen against Alabama. Okay. Yeah. In their last fifteen. Okay. That's three and twenty-eight. And they have not won in the swamp since 2003. So please tell them to shut the hell up. Oh, I agree. Saying. No, I, I completely agree with you, Brad. And uh I'm UK and Green Bay. It's yeah. in my DNA. That's right. That's the duo. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of Packers and Kentucky fans out there. You know, you got the whole Randall Cobb, you know, thing for a while that was going on there and everything. And Tim Mastay was a punter for Green Bay for a while, too. You had that going on. Yeah. Let me some Tim Mastay. Yeah. yeah, Josh Hart's in the comments says, get him, Brad. Yeah, how about Brad coming with the late night Tennessee rant here? That's awesome. I love it. I'm just so I'm just so tired of these Tennessee fans always bringing up the crap and talking about how, you know, they beat us all the time. I'm here to say we – are at least three and 12 against both of them in the last 15 years. And that's Tennessee and Florida. Yep. Okay. That's six and 24. It's not great. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's better than three and 28. <laughs> well, and you know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily anticipate that we were going to start the show off uh bad mouthing Tennessee. I knew we were at some point since they lost today. Well, but Jeff brought up the Tennessee game. So, you know, that's that's true. But Joe Milton, you know, everybody <laughs> came in before the season started saying, oh, Joe Milton's going to be the, you know, the next big thing or whatever, and because he could throw it really far. Well, and, and my thing was like, well, who cares if he can throw it far? You know, it, that doesn't matter how how, how many is completions is he going to have, right? He can and, throw it to the moon. It, it doesn't make a darn bit of difference in a game. And we saw that, and we saw that tonight. Right. I mean, I, I think we saw that they in the second half, they were sorted to just running the ball. I mean, they barely even threw it at all in the second half, which was crazy. I was watching that, uh, watching that game a little bit in, in between ours. Josh Hart also says, speaking of Cobb, he's the emergency QB for the Jets. Did you see that, Brad? I think yep, I saw that this I morning. I, I saw it last night, late last night. Man, oh that God, is man. uh that is crazy. Randall Cobb go, still go go Randall Cobb. We all know as Kentucky fans that he can come in and play QB if he needs to. We do. We do know that. Um and uh well, you know, you look at uh going back to the Kentucky game here, leaving a lot to be desired, like we said, but let's look at as we said last week, let's look at the highlights and not the lowlights to start off with. Um so let's look at a few scoring plays here. 
Um, let's look at our very first scoring play here, which who was that too? I think it was, uh, it was Josh Caddis. I think they got the first touchdown catch there and Bradley started off hot. Honestly, you know, the first drive was like what I needed to see. And I thought that's what it was going to be the whole game. I thought we were just going to run them out of there. Um, which in some we respects, did. we had, we, we had a good first drive. Um, yeah. And, and I'm not, and I'm not totally down. I just, there's a lot of things I was shaking my head. I feel like we left a whole lot on the table and, and against better competition, they're going to take advantage of three turnovers. They're going to take advantage of, of, cause we had three turnovers tonight, including a muff punt. That, um, that, absolutely. Well, let, let's, let's, you know, let's take a look at this. Josh, Josh Caddis, uh, catch for the, for the first scoring drive for Kentucky tonight. Leary under center, second and four. Fakes the handoff for Ray Davis. The quick pass out to Josh Caddis. Touchdown! There's a fast start for Kentucky. And it was actually uh it was a big night for Josh Caddis, I felt like. He he had a few few big plays, few big catches, and he got that touchdown catch. And you know, we've been wondering when are the tight ends gonna get going, right? And tonight we had jo both Josh Caddis and Jordan Dingle um yeah. combining for over a hundred yards receiving, uh, and uh six receptions total and a touchdown between the two of them. So um, I think we need to keep that going. You know, as we go into conference play here, I think we need to keep utilizing the tight ends. So hopefully, Cohen. Yeah, we we did see that. the tight ends um, finally come alive in the offense tonight. Um, Jordan Dingle was great, minus the turnover inside the ten yard line. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he was great as a tight end. He was fighting to try to get in the end zone and fighting for more yards at the end. And somebody come in, put the hat on the ball, and pops out. Um, which, you know, he was getting stood up. I mean, he was getting, you know, there was already a couple of guys on him. I mean, the truth is he, he probably should have went down at the 10, 11 yard line and, and we were driving and it was, you know, a, that was the third possession of the game, I believe. And we were doing a great job, but going back to what you're talking about, I mean, we did have Caddis had a couple of catches, had the touchdown that we just seen. That was in the very first drive of the, of the game. We, we did have a good first drive. Um, and it looked like we were well on our way for, you know, a good game, which we it did, did win 35 to three. Yeah, we did. I mean, we're not, we can't complain too much because we did end up sort of running them out of the area and we covered like Josh said, you know, begrudgingly, but we did cover at the end. I was kind of worried about, it. I told Josh, I was actually talking to Josh and I told Josh, I said, cause the spread, I, the last I seen the spread was 26 and we were up 25 and yeah, I, was I was like, Oh, <laughs> come on. Good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. good. Good teams win, great teams cover. That's what they right. say. Uh, yeah. And then we had that, you know, it, this is the perfect, for, for me, this symbolizes the entire season so far, and especially tonight's game. With the second touchdown of we had the, I think it was the snap that went over Leary's head, the second snap that went over Leary's head. We had a big loss, and then all of a sudden we throw a dime. Dave, Devin Leary throws a dime to Tavion Robinson for a touchdown. It's like, I, well, I guess you take the good with the bad, you know. So, check so this one in out. That, in that play, it was like yeah. a 21 or 22-yard loss. I know. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. and then we throw a touchdown. It's like, yeah. I mean, I, your emotions just are a roller coaster if you're a Kentucky yeah. fan of this game. But let's, let's take a look at this play here. His third touchdown of the season. Well, phenomenal catch in traffic. Tavion Robinson, I like how he stems this receiver inside, uses that leverage to his advantage. And a a great throw and a great catch. I mean, that was the best of of it Leary was, and and Robinson. It was a great, great play by both. It was a fantastic throw, and my favorite part about that entire play was Tavion Robinson jumping up and getting in that guy's face as <laughs> soon as he jumps up at the end of it. That was my favorite. Yeah. Part. Because the ref had because, to kind of push him away. Yeah, and the ref had to kind of come in, push him away because you could tell that he was kind of running his mouth because the Tavion jumps up and responds like that. Um, yeah. And, you know, Tavion's through three games 
everybody had been talking about Brown and Dane Key, mm-hmm. um, the sophomores. Um, Tavion's the fifth year senior, second year at Kentucky, and so far through three games, I think he's the best wide receiver that we that we have seen. I would agree with that. Um, and you know, my man Dane Key, he's he's got to catch. He's got to catch the passes, man. <laughs> like he's he's still dropping some. He dropped a couple last game. He dropped at least one I saw tonight. And then I think that was his only target. Was it really? I think that, I think that one throw was his only target. He had zero catches. And if I'm not mistaken, that was his only target. I think now, I will say this on that pass. Yeah. During the week, I don't know if you caught this or not, but they were talking to uh, Cohen, and Cohen made the um, statement that Leary sometimes like tries to throw off the mound, meaning he tries to put everything behind it and just cock it and just – and on that play, I felt like that's what Leary did. The pass was there, but he just, can't, just tried to cannon it, man. I mean, he just – you know, and – it was hot. I mean, it was a hot pass, and it hit him right in the hands. And, and of course, you know, he was 10 yards away, and he missed it on that play. But what worries I, me the most is, is he only had one target all night long. Well, I think he may have had – I think the second one uh, was when uh, – Leary almost said Levis – when Leary threw him uh, – through the interception. I think he was technically targeting Dane. I don't know if Dane ran a wrong route again. He did that the last time. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. That was a target for Dane. Yeah, you're right on that. Um, yeah. but uh, but still, I I don't know if that's on Leary or if that's on Dane. It could. It looked like it was kind of on Dane because Leary thought he was going to keep going. Dane stopped and turned around. Um, I know. So I I don't know who that's on. Um, only only Stoops does, I guess. Um. But uh, then we had two touchdowns by Ray Davis, which what a game by Ray Davis. And <laughs> I think this one, this play, like the last scoring play to Tavion Robinson, kind of sums up the ups and downs of the season so far. We almost Sport, got sacked. <laughs> and then, Sports center top ten right here, guys. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was, a, it was a good play, but like, Leary was all but wrapped up. It was a sack, and then Davis gets out of it. I mean, it was a great play, but it was like, should Somehow, we? I was like, should we even feel good about that or not? Well, you know, he they, he had three players on him. Leary did in the backfield for a sack, and he shakes them and somehow gets his head up and finds Davis. It's really an amazing play. It, it's Sports Center top ten right here. That clip didn't show the entire clip where Leary almost got sacked. I got it from the Kentucky football page, so maybe they didn't want to uh, share that on there. But everybody knows the play I'm talking about, and you'll see it back on highlights, and you'll see it on Sports Center, according to Brad. So, <laughs> um, and then we had the uh, the last, the second of the two Ray Davis touchdowns, which was also just an electric run uh, from him. Do they have the explosiveness on offense? Or can they score with people and go punch for punch with some of the best offenses in the SEC? And are they disciplined enough? Ray Davis. Look at him go. Ray Davis. All gas, no brakes. Touchdown again. This time 55 yards. Well, the leading rusher from Vanderbilt who transfers to Kentucky, Ray Davis, has that home run threat and ability. And you can see him split defenders here, and I love his ability to finish it with a touchdown. And he only had seven carries for 72 yards. Does that feel right, Brad? No, it does not feel right. I've been talking, I've been talking to Josh. Josh that's on here with us. 
a comment. I've been talking to Josh all night during the game. We've been messaging him back and forth. Before the game, I was like, just run the damn ball tonight. Like, yeah. I want to see us. I want to see us. I'm sick and tired of seeing us have 16 or 18 carries for the entire game. And guess yep. how many carries we had tonight? If you take off the one Barry and Brown carry and you take off the quarterback's carries, mm-hmm. guess how many – Guess how many we had? We had 17 um, carries. Yep, looks like 17. Yep, I'm looking we at it We had too. 17 carries. I I just don't like it. It needs and to be 30 why, plus. And the reason why I'm going to say this, and I'm going to keep preaching on this this season, Yeah. when, when Kentucky has been really good, is when we ran the ball 25 or 30 times. We had Benny Snell. Yep, that's Kentucky and had, football. And we had Chris Rodriguez. And we could still be good through the air, and we could still, you know, do the whole Cohen offense and stuff, but, like, uh, being able to run the ball is going to allow the passing game to open up even more. We can, When the game was on the line, we controlled the clock and they could not stop a five. They could not stop us getting a we five yard carry. We haven't been able to do that yet. When we've been good, really good, those 10 and three teams. Yep. I'm telling y'all right now, it's when we could line up and run the ball down their throat. Have we won the time of possession in any of these three games? Because I feel like we probably haven't. We lost it tonight even, by almost – we, we lost it tonight even by, by almost 10 minutes. Like it was yeah. 30, 34-47 uh, for Akron and 25-13 for Kentucky on time of possession. You, so. How many plays did we run tonight? I think not enough yet again. Um, but here, let's see if I can find that. Um we just haven't had, been getting that many snaps. We had 27 pass plays. Uh-huh. And they're giving us and they're giving us 22 rush 22 attempts. rush attempts. So that's yeah, that's not that's enough. Only, that's only 49 plays. Y'all. That's fewer than we had in against Ball State. Yes. So, yeah. Like, that's crazy. I just I, that's I, some of these real fast Fast, happy teams can run 40 plays and a half. Yeah. I don't know. Why do you think that is, Brad? Why do you think we're not going faster than we are? Because clearly somebody, whether it's Cohen or Stoops, I don't know, is purposely slowing this offense down. And I feel like we have the tools that would benefit from going faster, right? And even the commentators are talking about this tonight. Slowing the game down gives underdogs – the upper a hand, and, and, and that's yeah. why Akron was able, and and these other teams have been able to hang with us for longer than we would like, is because they're winning the time of possession. They're slowing the game down, which is what we usually do. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a, an idea of this, okay? And and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out this number: Travis Hunter, who is playing yep. both sides of the ball in in Colorado, okay? Yep, right now too. He's, he's playing. He's playing both sides of the ball. Before tonight's game, okay, in two games, this guy has played 274 snaps. That is in, that is insane, isn't it? That's in two crazy. Games, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. That means that he has averaged over 135 plays of offense and defense. In two games. That means that they are running about 67, 68 plays a game. We are now running about 50 plays, 52 plays a game is what we're running. Yeah. And that's just not enough. No, it's not. We need to go faster, I think. I mean, go through these three games, I feel like we do need to go faster. But well, let's, let's open up the phone lines. We want to hear from you guys watching down there. If you are a repeat caller or if you have never called before, we'd love to hear from you. 502-234-1504. Give us a shout. Tell us your thoughts on the game, your thought on the offense, um, your thought on the Colorado-Colorado State game, which, by the way, a little update for everybody. Second quarter just started of that game. 
tied up at 14. Wasn't expecting that after the smack talk from Colorado State's coach to Dion. Man, I thought they were going to come out and just game was going to be over at the end of the first quarter. You know, uh, it's still early, but it's yeah, early. I agree with yeah. you. Um, but everybody give us a shout if you would like 502-234-1504. And, uh, as we were talking about before, Brad, like it's just been a crazy day of college football. Alabama was tied at three with Southern Florida forever. Georgia Alabama. almost lost to South Carolina. Freaking Lina. Like <laughs> what is this? You know, it's a crazy Florida, day. Florida state probably should have lost to Boston. To Boston College, that's right. Forgot about that. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they did pull it out, but I mean, um, you know, Tennessee gets hammered at you know uh, tonight at Florida, which I don't really think this Florida team is all that great. They do have two really good running backs. Yeah. And 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 one of them had. 119 yards on 11 carries in the first half tonight. And our running back gets seven carries. Are you yep. kidding me? The entire game. We that's just isn't that just coaching, do you think? That's got to be just coaching. That's a right? head scratcher to me. I mean, that's like, yeah. What how, how in the world do you get seven carries? from your lead running back an entire game. I don't, I don't understand know. that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know either. Now, I will say this. I think tonight was a little bit off and a little bit different because Cohen was up in the booth. That That is different. But, you know, and, I've always wondered about that. Like Cohen, Well, he's not used to it, and Cohen's always on the field, and he can run his – his lineups in and out, and he can run his guys in and out. Uh-huh. And tonight, that's if you remember early on in the game, we called a timeout. Yep, like it, it, like drive, sec- it was the second play. Second, it was the second play. We called, we called a timeout. The reason why that timeout was called is because they were trying to switch players in and out, and he was doing it from the booth. Yeah, and and time was running out, so they had to call a timeout. How much so of the miscommunications it me, they can they can call a timeout the second play of the game when they're paying attention to the clock. Yeah. So, so they don't get a penalty, but they can't call a timeout when we kick a 53 yard field goal. I, I think I think some of it's certainly on the coaches, and I think the whole going faster thing uh is certainly on the coaches. Maybe they have a rationale for it, but to me it just doesn't make much sense. And to a lot of people it doesn't make much sense, it seems like. So yeah. Um, Missouri kicked the longest field goal in the history of the SEC today, sixty-one and they damn, yards. And they damn near screwed that up. They had a five. They had a delay of game. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, really? Oh man, yes. what's with this? Yeah, I don't know. They the exact same thing. They were lining up for a fifty-six yarder and had a delay of game. Went back five yards, and the guy still kicked it and kicked a sixty-one yarder. Man, yep, that's Man. exactly what happened with that crazy, crazy day. You can't make this stuff up. What, what do you think's the deal with? Like, you know, if we look at this schedule, Tennessee is not as good as we thought they were. Georgia is probably not as good as we thought they were. Alabama, Alabama's not as good as what we thought. As good as what we thought. Um, we might not be as good as what we thought we were, but I. It's, this is true too, yeah. As so far, yeah, yeah. But I mean, how are you feeling going to SEC play overall? You know, I, I, I mean, what, what's I'll be comfort? honest with you. If you want to know what I think, I think for the first time in a long time, the SEC might be, and I'm I'm putting a might on it. Okay, I, you yeah. know, I, I'm still not trusting that that when it comes down to it, that Georgia and Alabama is going to be exactly what we saw today or uh-huh. the last couple of weeks. I'm still not trusting that totally. Right. Yeah, of course. But is there a chance that it could be way more open than it has been in a long time? I think so. I think the chance is there. After yep. three weeks, after looking at it, I think the chance is there. I'm not sold on Georgia just yet. Alabama today 
I will say this. They played three quarterbacks, and they were playing a, a team that wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. So so they ran three quarterbacks in and out. They started one. They played Milrow. They ended with Ty Simpson. They'd done that on purpose to gauge – what each, you know, in game to gauge what each one is going to be do or going to do in the game. And I think Saban's going to try to make a decision because I'm pretty sure they play Ole Miss next week. Ole Miss has looked out of, out of all it the looked, teams in, in the SEC. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that Ole Miss hasn't looked the strongest so far. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think they have. Who they play today? Who did Ole Miss play today? Do you, they do played Georgia Tech tonight, and they were ahead. Okay, they were ahead a bunch. I'm not sure. I, I haven't, I haven't looked at the final score, but LSU won playing. big today. Mississippi State, that's another team on our schedule, is probably not as good as advertised, right? Um, so all of a sudden, I mean, I still feel like Kentucky has a chance to win every game they play. I mean, I really believe that. Right now, listen. If we can clean up our own mistakes and our own just sometimes dumbfounded plays, just like mm -hmm. the coach calling a timeout stuff, I mean, you know, if we can clean up our own stuff, grabbing a jersey on a TD for no reason, you know what I mean? If we can clean up some of our own stuff, I think I agree with you, Coleman. I think this team – could have a chance to win every single game on the schedule. Now, yep. to go to Georgia and to beat Georgia in Athens, we South Carolina almost did it. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah, okay, but we so. can't have we can't have three turnovers. We can't have a, a field goal called back. We can't have a TD called back. We can't have you know what I mean, like. We yeah. can't have that stuff if we're going to beat Georgia in Athens. I mean, it's but, just well, not the, going to happen. The thing of getting behind the chains like we did today, like the snapping over his head and stuff like that, which – We had two Jagger, or three snapping problems. It was Jagger Burton, and he Jagger Burton had that holding call where the, the kid got yes, called back, right? Yeah. yeah. Who's that kid that caught that touchdown pass, number five? Anthony um, Brown Stevens. He's a Anthony freshman. Anthony Brown Stevens, yeah. So He's now that had got two called plays back. He's called back. Yeah, that's that sucks. And yeah, so it's a tough day for, for Jagger. I'm just continually surprised that these, you know, stupid penalties and these beating ourselves things are, are going on like they are. But I think we got Josh Hart on the phone here. What's up, Josh? Josh said you might want to call hey, have your on, bleep yeah. ready. <laughs> Josh said I might have, have have the bleep ready. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it's it's felt like that the first few games, but man, <laughs> sometimes, man, woo, what are we doing? Oh, no, I know. <laughs> With Brad, like, what, what, I mean, Larry, if you look at Larry's stat line at the end of the night, at sixteen and twenty six, three fifteen, three touchdowns, and an interception, you'd be like, oh, dude had a solid game. That's how each one of the three games has been. Like he's looked really good on paper, but then like he doesn't pass the eye test. Like all Kentucky fans are real frustrated. So it's it's a very confusing thing. And you know, this stat, I forgot to mention this stat, but going into this game, we were second in the country uh in points per possession um to uh to USC. Points per points or, per play, I think. Points points per play. Okay, points per play yeah. to USC, which is like I would not have guessed that if you didn't tell me that. No, so I wouldn't either. Yeah. But, uh, Ray but there's the reason why that happened. Two yards, and he also had three receptions for almost 100, 97 for him. So he, he was a beast tonight for uh, for Kentucky. And like I, I text you during the game, you know, Vanderbilt's really sad because uh, we, we, we took their best, best running back period. Oh, we really did. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah, thank goodness for Ray Davis. But what do you what do you feel like, Josh? Are you do you sort of feel like um, you feel good, but you feel bad at the same time? You, are you like the rest of us? Yeah, I feel good that we covered again and we won by thirty two. But it was kind of a slow, ugly 30, 35 points, and you're like, mm, just when you you know we have big play and you got holding or. 
or, you know, you know, Larry got hit late and they didn't flag the dude. I thought it was targeting, but maybe it wasn't. But still, they didn't even flag the guy for hitting Larry late. And that took him out of the game. And I don't know what the status is on him. If he's just, they're like, you know, that's just, that's it for the night. You're good, but we're not putting you back in. Or he's got some kind of rib issue. I, I think so. I, I don't think that he's injured. Um, I mean, he was over running around on the sideline. And, you know, it was just late enough in the game. I think after that hit, Stoops probably thought, yeah, I'm not going to take a chance of him getting hurt, you know, going into the Vandy game. So that would be my yeah, guess. I, I think he's all right. We, we were up. 28 to 3 then, so there was really no point in him coming back out. That's true. Seven, eight minutes to go, something like that. There wasn't much time but, either. Yeah. Um, yeah. Penalties again. I think we had, what did we have penalties? Hold on. Oh, uh, we had at I'm least talking. four for 30 five. yards. We had five for 45 yards. Five for four. Yeah, that's that's way too many. <laughs> that's way too many. That's, that, that's, that's what is that, nine, nine yards of penalty? Yeah, we're singing the same same song we were singing at the end of last game. So, yeah, I just we did have one thirty. We did have one thirty five on the ground, and Brad was close. I said, he, I think we. I talked to him a lot during the game on uh, Messenger too. Yeah, I think he said one fifty was his goal for Kentucky. So I, I think that's yeah. right. That's Brad. If that's right, because uh, yeah, that's what I said. Is. I, I wanted to get to one fifty tonight on the ground, short of what he predicted. He said one fifty for UK, and I got one thirty five. Close. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Brad's been killing it with the numbers lately. He he he's yeah, been he, uh, he he's he, been doing this forever. I mean, I think like uh, what was it that we was talking about? Uh, oh yeah, we talking about them announcers for ESPNU uh, for ESPN. We've never heard of. And I told and Brad said, <laughs> I think I got more power followers than they do. And I said, Yeah, probably so. Hey, Brad's going to be calling the games next week. I told, yeah. I told Josh, yeah. I said, well, I who in the world are all these guys? He wouldn't be, be able to do it anymore because uh, we'd probably get in trouble and get fired after one game because <laughs> we would be voicing our opinions too much. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's right. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, how uh, you feeling so going into like – how, how you feeling okay. going into conference play, Josh? You, you, you feel uh, good yeah, but worse? Right. No, I honestly I think we're fine. I mean, we got some things to work on the penalty, the stupid mistakes. You know, I'm not. You know, we got to. Larry's got to connect the dang key some. I mean, we got to get that working. Uh, but I mean, you look at Alabama, Georgia today, Tennessee today. They're all struggling. You know, Mississippi State got mashed by LSU. That's right. Mississippi State's supposed to be so good, and I mean, Arkansas got beat tonight. Hey, we're gonna beat everybody. <laughs> that's right. Everybody, everybody's struggling. That that's the name of the game. You know I, how you SEC, think Alabama fans feel. The SEC in general is struggling this year. We're that smash mouth, power mouth, or power conference. Mm-hmm. It just hits opponents in the mouth. No matter if we're playing Akron or we're playing, you know, Mississippi State. We're 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 tough. We're you know we're it, man. I don't know what the hell is going on, but SEC ain't where it's at right now. <laughs> Go home, SEC. You're drunk. Yep, that's that's kind of like what it feels like right now, doesn't call it? The, call it. Call the SEC an Uber. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Call the SEC an Uber. That is that. That sums up this entire season so far. Well, well, thanks for calling yeah. in, Josh. We appreciate it. All right, man. Appreciate you all. Go Cats. Good win. Just got a few things we got to tweak and get better before we go to Vanderbilt next weekend and. Hopefully we can and go down to Vandy, smash them out, and just keep on continuing the, the, the good run we're having right now. So that's all, all we can focus on. That's right. Bless night. Go Cats. Go Cats. Thanks, Josh. 502-234-1504. Give us a shout. Love to hear from you. Um, Josh makes some good points on the SEC. I want to give you guys a rundown. So Alabama and South Florida was 3-3 three to three in the – Le- mid to late third quarter. Okay. Yep. They pulled away 17 to three. They finally put in Ty Simpson and Ty Simpson did get them two touchdowns, move the ball. He didn't throw two touchdowns, uh-huh. but uh, they, they scored 17 points. That's the least amount of points they've scored against a non-conference team since 2014. Yeah. I don't remember four. seeing that stat. I mean, that's, it's, yeah. it's hard to believe Georgia. But- Georgia beat South Carolina today 24 to 14 and was down at halftime. I'm pretty sure. 
in this game. Florida beat Tennessee in the swamp tonight, 29 to 16. LSU demolished Mississippi State tonight, 41 or today, 41 to 14. It was 41 to 7. They scored a TD late. Yep. Missouri is the only team in the SEC that made a real big statement today, and that was beating Kansas State, who is number 15 in the polls in the AP. Yep. Um, they beat them 30 to 27 on a 61 yard field goal at the end. Ole Miss beat Georgia Tech tonight, 48 to 23. And I, I've already been on record stating I think Ole Miss through three games has looked the best. Texas AM beat UNL, UL Monroe, which 47 to 3. Yeah. Auburn beat Samford 45 13, which is a nobody. UNLV yeah. beat Vanderbilt. 40 to 37 late in that game. Yep. BYU come back and beat Arkansas tonight. 30 Couldn't believe to 31. it. 31. Could not believe it. Yep. All right. Unbelievable. And Kentucky, and Kentucky beat Akron 35 to 3. That's a rundown of the SEC. So really, we're in no worse spot as, as anybody else. <laughs> Ole Miss is the bright spot of the SEC, like you said so far, it feels like. I don't know. Yeah, anybody had Auburn as the last West SEC unbeaten team? I certainly didn't. But I think that's the case. Texas I think A&M right. got beat last week. Mississippi State has now got beat. LSU's got beat. Alabama's got beat. Arkansas yep. got beat today. If, if y'all had Auburn – as the last remaining in three weeks, as the last get. remaining um, undefeated team in the SEC West, I want to shake y'all's hand. I actually, I actually want to bet with y'all. Y'all, y'all. Yeah, right. Y'all. Yeah, yeah. Few, I mean, Texas kind of struggled with Wyoming for for a long time. There, it seemed like they too. Did. So, um, I feel like college football is more wide open this year, at least through three weeks. I feel like college football is way more open this year than it has been in, in recent years. I think years. the Pac-12 has got some really good teams, and I think Texas has a good shot of running through the Big 12. Um, what's the – I did not. He did not have um, Auburn. Auburn. Auburn yeah, the last remaining undefeated SEC I'm, West team. I'm assuming that's what he's talking about, yeah. Yeah, because if you did, man, like seriously, you, you got like Nostradamus stuff or something. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Um, well, anybody else yeah. wants to call in, 502-234-1504. Give us a shout, especially if you never called before. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us your thoughts on the Cats, how you're feeling going into SEC play starting next week. So we got Vandy next week. You feel like we're going to win that game, Brad? You feeling pretty good about that? I mean, Vandy's doesn't hasn't looked good. I mean, honestly, UNLV yeah. is not that great. I mean, they got a first year head coach out there. Barry Odom's out there, actually, the old Missouri coach. Um, oh, first okay. Year head coach Barry, he, the old Missouri coach. I, I remember is, him. Yeah, Barry Odom is that's who. Yeah, that, he, and he's, he, he's in his first year. Um, they're just not. I mean, you know, they're not ready for the big time out there yet. They've had an awful, awful few years. UNLV has. Yeah. Um. And and to beat Vandy tonight, I, I you know I, I I don't see unless we go to Nashville next week and completely beat ourselves. You know what I mean? Which like, which could know, happen. That could right. happen. <laughs> unless we yeah. go there and you know and have three or four turnovers and you know make some dumb calls, have TDs called back. You know if we. If, Completely beat ourselves. You know, anything can happen. We can definitely lose a game like that. But that's that's the play, question. But if we play like we should, <coughs> excuse me, if we play like we should, I feel like it's a two or three touchdown win. Yeah. I even feel like it should be. It yeah, should be. Even on the road. I mean, I'm never people say I oh, gotta play Vandy down there. I mean, is anybody ever concerned about playing Vandy at Vandy? I mean, that is not an electric atmosphere. That's not gonna matter. Playing all at 14, Vandy is not matter. All fourteen people is gonna be there. 
Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> 14. <laughs> That's right. And they're doing construction, so it might even be less than 14 now down there. And then we get you get yeah. Florida at home, right? So I, I, I feel confident in our – I after watching the Tennessee-Florida game, Brad, do you think Tennessee is bad or do you think Florida is good? So Florida is – mostly one dimensional. They have two really good backs. Two really yep. good running backs. So the main thing with Florida is the two backs and Ricky per- Pearsall. That's their that's their go-to wide receiver. Yep. What do you what do you think about that quarterback though? Grant Graham Mertz or Grant Mertz, whatever his name is. Graham Mertz. I mean, he's a he's a decent quarterback. I, there's nothing terribly wrong with him. He's wanted Wisconsin. You know, he's done a good job there as mm-hmm. far as winning overall winning games and stuff. I mean, it's not like he's a terrible quarterback. He just um he's not on a top tier stature. And and he shouldn't and and we and we and he shouldn't be able to come to Lexington and play that way, to be honest. Uh, on the uh, on paper, he doesn't look as good as I would have thought tonight. He was nineteen to twenty four for one hundred sixty six yards and a, and one touchdown. So I mean, it's like I mean, he's decent. You know, you know what I mean? Like he's yeah. decent. But they ran the ball down Tennessee's throat tonight. Yeah, they did. Look at their look at their rushing stats. That's what I'm most confident in about our defense right now. Maybe the only thing I'm confident in about our defense is our, our rushing defense. I yeah. feel like, um, so we we I feel like we match up well with Florida in that regard. Um, yeah. I'm still concerned about, you know, I I love Brad White, but this whole bend don't break thing is really annoying at times. I feel like sometimes we bend more than I would like. <laughs> Is how I'd sum it up. We don't we don't play great we don't play great defense from the thirty to thirty. No, we don't. No, but but when when they start getting inside the thirty, that's when we step it up and we play great defense. See, that's why I always feel like we don't like we play worse defense than the score reflects. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. is what I feel like. He's he's great at calling plays and stopping people from scoring. He's great at it. Yeah. Now, he's not that great. Like I said, from the 30 to 30, people can usually, usually get quite a bit of yards on us. Yeah. But I guess yeah. it doesn't matter if they're not scoring. So right. <laughs> I guess that's his philosophy. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Josh so says, wanna... does, it, does it look like Stoops is way too relaxed? He looked too chill on the sideline a few times. They showed him. I don't know. He didn't. He didn't look chill uh, a couple weeks ago against Ball State when he was yelling at the ref. But no, I yeah. I feel like especially Brad. We, you know, we we're talking about that timeout at the beginning of the game. Suits was furious that they had to call that timeout. He was he was up in in Leary's face screaming at him after yeah. that. So. I don't know. I feel like maybe Stoops is like, eh, let's just get the hell out of here and get these wins, and let's go. Let's go start SEC play, and we can all be serious when, when that comes around. Well, I hope so. to goodness after last year that they take they take Vandy serious next week. I hope they do. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Right? I'm there's serious. no way after losing to them last year. There's no At way home. we the, the coaches don't take them take us seriously. So yeah. Um, do, hopefully- do you think it's it's hard for these kids? to to get up for these games that like I mean you, how do you get hyped to play Akron? I mean <laughs> I, I mean, would you say know? I would say yes to that question except these games are the first games of the season and you have been off and doing all this training and all this you know um stuff up to it for months and months and months and then you finally get the lights and cameras on you yep. would think you 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 would think after six months of that that you would be up for these games. You would think. I mean, you, you would, would think, think so. You it know. does not seem like it's been that way, though. I mean, we just right. feel. I feel like we've lacked energy, especially in the Eastern game. But even tonight, besides that first drive, I feel like the first half we didn't really have the energy um, that we needed to be able to blow these guys out. Right? I mean, well, we that ended play, up doing that. Play that. At the end, what, that play at the end. 
um, the second clip that you showed that I said was Sports Center top ten actually happened with about eight seconds to go in the second in the first half. It was at the very end of the first half. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise we would have just had one score. It would have been seven at halftime. I guess that's just like Mark Stoops football in a way. It's like we win games. We're not going to blow people out, but we're going to figure out how to win games. You know, as long as we win, it's like fine. Yeah, but, but it's so strange. My biggest thing is this. We used to do that with running the ball and ball control. And, I know. And, and, and we would, and we would like, um, you know, get 10, 17 points in the first half or whatever. And we were, we would just run the ball down, you know, down teams' throats. Now we're, you know, I mean, tonight, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure we had 49 plays, which is nothing in a game. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, I want to say this. I, I've said a lot of negative stuff. And, and I, and I want to say this. I really like the way Leary's playing. I do too. Yes. Yes. He has missed a few throws here and there. Okay. Yep. He's had just as many go through a receiver's hands. Tonight he hit Barry on Brown in the end zone on a play that literally fell in his basket and went right through his hands. Um he had a touchdown call back to Anthony, Anthony Brown Stevens, who's a freshman. Yep. Uh, you know, if if he has those two big plays. He's got 400 yards. Yeah, no, I think I, I think we got I think we got a Claude Hare call coming in here. I'll take this real quick. How's it going, Claude? Good, good. How y'all doing? Oh, uh, we're we're tired, but we're three and zero, so that's all that matters, right? I appreciate you thinking of me earlier, though, like about the tickets. Uh, oh yeah, man. So got so caught up with other stuff. I was trying to hook Clyde up with some tickets earlier, Brad. Okay. <laughs> and uh, if you got Florida tickets, I'll take a look. Really yeah. For me to go, anyways. Uh, we finally got everything out of our house. Oh, there you go, man. Yeah, I bet that was a big undertaking to have to move. Moving sucks. Moving is not fun. But moving in is fun. That's the fun part, though. Moving in is fun. Moving out is not. Oh, moving out, no. Yeah, moving in can be fun. Moving out, definitely not. No, I agree with you on that. On that. Yeah, these, man, they just today they just like energy, man. Besides that first run, man, they just they just like energy the whole game. I really believe that they just did not care. Man, I really well, think that they just thought that they could take some plays off. When you're at Kentucky and when you're playing in the SEC, you don't take plays off no matter who you're playing. Because once you take a play off, you're gonna get, you you get beat. That's what happens. Especially when you sleep on defense, you get burned out on the round or whatever. You can't do that. You can't do that again, even against non conference teams. You can't continue to get burned out on other plays. And you know, I just don't know. Like I just, I guess they just don't care like about these non conference games. Like I don't think they really care. I was gonna say, do you think it's harder for them to feel that urgency? Yeah, I do because, like you know, they're they're like looking at Akron like, oh, they're one of the three worst teams in Division One. Right. We don't got to take these boys serious, and it's like if they, I swear, if they're like this against Vanderbilt next week, they will lose. Yeah, I know they will, but I feel like we do say this at least about one non-conference game every year. Like, man, if we play like this against Florida, we're going to lose, and then we. We play. I feel like Kentucky and maybe everybody tends to play down to their competition and play up to their competition. So hopefully that's the case. And you know, if we're looking at this in a positive lens, I mean, Alabama struggled today, right? Georgia struggled today. Everybody is is struggling with it. I feel like every every fan base is saying the exact same thing right now. So at least we're not alone. Hey, Florida didn't struggle today, though. Yeah, but they, I mean, they, of course, they're going to get up for that game. I mean, it's Tennessee coming in, you know, right? Like, I, I yeah. feel like, they, of course, they're going to get up for that game. It's a little bit harder to get up for Akron. So that's yeah. a little bit different, yeah. I think. But it, it's always good to see tennis, uh, to see Florida beat Tennessee, especially in the swamp, because Tennessee, they talk so much 
they talk so much, you know, and they run their mouth. They're like, um, they're like, yep. what do you call? It? They're like those. What do you call those people that continue to run their mouth and they never stop? Not trash talk, well, trash talking, but um, it's like something else that you call somebody that does that. Um, I call them Tennessee fans. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they they run their mouth too much and they yeah. don't know when to shut up. And I hopefully they can shut up tonight, but I doubt it. They'll probably find something to play about. Oh, uh, well, if we would have just hit right down that receiver, we could have made yeah. the first down. Right yeah, if it weren't there. for the it weren't for the refs, we would have won. If it weren't for the refs, <laughs> yeah, that's that's so what really, they say. They, John, I keep telling people, John Milton sucks. He sucks. I mean, I'm not afraid to say it. Like he sucks. He is no handing hooker. I mean, I get he has a strong arm, but I really don't see the hype about him. I did with handing hooker because. You know, Hannon Hooker, he didn't just, like, he didn't have the biggest arm, but he always made the right plays with his arms, too. Joe Millen just wants to bomb it down the field every time, and he's not as accurate as Hannon was. That's what made Hannon so good. He was accurate and, you know, whatever. And uh, Yeah. But um, I think Tennessee's going to struggle this year. I really do. Well... It's looking like a whole lot of SEC teams going to struggle this year. Yeah, it's looking like the whole whole SEC is going to struggle this year. Well, you know, if nothing else, guys, tonight we can celebrate Tennessee losing. As as Josh Hart in the comments here says, "Get them, Clyde," and he says, "Nothing sucks like the Big Orange in Tennessee." Um, and uh, we can celebrate that we're three and zero, and we can get excited to play in conference play next week. And so the real season starts next week. So, yeah, let's Definitely. let's and, just. Uh, uh, Let's just remember the good, throw out the bad, and hopefully um, ho- hopefully have a good year. Absolutely. And I'm with Josh. I think we'll beat Georgia and Athens. I'm just saying. I mean, South Carolina almost the other day, so was to say we can't finish the job. But oh, uh, South Carolina did. You know, I'm just saying. We just but, need uh, to get firing on all cylinders. And I feel like between this Vandy and Florida game, you know, maybe we can maybe we can do that. So. You know, I'm honestly, more, I'm actually kind of nervous about that Florida game now than I was at the beginning of the year. Cause oh, I'm more nervous Florida, now for sure. Yep. Florida might surprise a lot of people now with that Tennessee win. They might. They might. Um, but you got anything else for us, Claude? Um, you couldn't ask for a better weather day, though, today. I mean, today's weather was great. Oh, I mean, was it there? Good. Yeah, it was beautiful today. Um we're supposed to get some rain tonight, but um, other than that, it's gone. It's been a good weekend. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna let you all go. I know it's late and we're all tired, so I'm gonna get back to watching the rest of the show. And uh, y'all have a great night, Cats of Three and oh, And what more can we ask for? That's right, man. Thanks for calling in. As always, we we appreciate it, man. Absolutely. All right. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye bye. Well, yeah. Tennessee, I mean, Tennessee you know, lost. Kentucky won, and Kentucky covered. That's a good day, and, and I mean that's that's a good day. Yeah, I mean it is. And and I just wanted to finish up real quick on a couple of things. So I was talking about Leary as a, as Kentucky fans. If you're a Kentucky fan and you're complaining about the way Leary's been playing, then then you need to have your eyes wide open because yeah. <laughs> Leary, you know what I mean, like. We have yeah, had, I want to go on. I want to go on record saying that I love Devin Leary. I think he's. A we great haven't had a three thousand yard passer in like since like two thousand eight or something since Mike Hartline. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and you know Leary is on pace to do that. He now has eight TDs, I think, three interceptions. Yep. On the season. Over 850 yards, and I mean, you look at like I said, you look at the a couple of plays that got called back tonight, and I mean, he's got stellar, stellar stats. You know, um, yeah. You know, so I think I really like the way Leary is playing. I think that Brown and Key have to play a little better. I liked that we used the tight ends tonight. Yep. Uh, The tight end play was a lot better. We even threw it to Cummings once, and he got a flag down the field. Um, He didn't – you know, it was was a pass interference on that, but we threw it to Isaiah Cummings once down there. Plus, we threw 
you know, Dingle and and Caddis had catches that we talked about earlier. Um, I think the defense, I thought Harrison played great tonight. Um, and so did Trevin Wallace, of course. I thought both of them played really well. I think the defense is playing pretty good. You know, we just have to clean up some of our own mistakes. I didn't think five penalties was terrible tonight. I think we had eight or ten last week. Yep. Um, so, you know, I didn't think five penalties was terrible. It was just that one of them cost us a touchdown, you know. Yeah, that's that's just the, mo- the most frustrating th- thing through these first three games are the shooting ourselves in the foot penalties. That's if yeah. we, If we don't have those tonight, we win – by, I don't know, what, 40, 50? 50? 52 to 6 is what it should have been. Yeah, okay. The, yeah, I remember you said that score at the beginning. Yeah, 52 to yep. 6. Easily, yep. right? So, yeah. no, I agree. Yeah. Well, we'll do a last call for calls here. Anybody else wants to call in? 502-234-1504. Give us a shout. Um, and if not, we'll, we'll start to wrap way, it up guys, here. guys, it's almost halftime. And- Colorado. Colorado State is ahead of Colorado, twenty-one to fourteen. What a day! Just what what a day! <laughs> I mean, now there is a second half to play. Okay, there so is. Y- y- you never know. I mean, Colorado might come out and whip their tail. You know, in the second half. I, you know, I don't know what'll happen. But yeah. just to give you guys an update while we're on the air, um, there is yep. twenty-four seconds to go in the half, according to what I'm looking at. And uh, Colorado State has the ball. It's 21-14. Go home, college football. You're drunk. Um, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's crazy. What a day. What a day. Which it was It was crazy in Colorado. You know, Stephen A. was out there wearing the sunglasses. Did you see The, the Rock? Ro- the, rock. <laughs> the, yeah. rock was the Rock was there. The Rock was out there like. doing game day pick, our college game day picks today. Man. Uh, yeah. I, I was because I, I was watching that this morning because you know I went to to see you and so I was like, man, I cannot believe that college game day is at freaking CU Boulder, and then out of nowhere, just here comes the Rock, like just out of nowhere, and and Dion's like, what? The Rock's here? Like I'm like, man. Mm-hmm. But uh, well, hopefully, that's you know, maybe lot, that's a whole lot to live up to with college game day. I mean, it is. Had, when's the last time? I, I bet you college game day's never been to Boulder. I think they have, but it was it was prior. It was apparently prior to the Lee Corso headset um, era. So that's been a while. <laughs> I don't remember if if how long exactly college game day has been around. Has it been over thirty years? I think it has. I'm pretty sure. Um. I'd I don't to, remember that, exactly when college game day like started because Colorado was really good in the around 1990. Yeah, that's the reason why I said 30 years. They were re- they had a team out there um, and was really good around 1990. Is the last time I remember. Yeah. Because uh, they won like a national championship, right? And they split it with Georgia Tech or something like that. It was like 1992, I think, was, something like that. It was somewhere around the early 90s. Yeah. 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 Um, well, you know, I, to sum things up, we don't feel great, um, but we don't feel bad. And I think everybody kind of feels bad in college football right now. <laughs> every every fan base like kind of feels way, weird. I like the way Leary's playing. I like the way Tavion Robinson is playing. Trevin, uh, Trevin Wallace is playing great on defense. I think the defensive front looks good. I really like our linebackers, our 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 corners that everybody was worried about has you know has looked pretty good. Um, and you know, I, I there's a lot to look at individually and and be, you know, and be happy about. The only there, thing that I that I think needs cleaned up is some of our own mistakes. Our own shooting ourselves in the foot. That's exactly yeah. right. And yeah. that is that that is fixable. So hopefully we fix that. I think yeah. that would be great. 
John, before we get out of here, Josh Hart, fine, he comes in clutch and finds the uh, game day stats there. Uh, in 1987, it first aired with Tim Brando as host and Lee Corso and Bino Cook as commentators, giving an overview of college football games. Uh, Carrie Ross soon became the first female to join the broadcast. Um, that was 10 years before I was born, so I would not know that. Um, well, I was but, born. I was a, I was a kid then. I was born yeah. for sure. Uh, but I I was uh, I'm a little surprised. I thought it was like early nineties, like ninety ninety one, something like that is what I would have guessed. I wouldn't have guessed eighty seven. Eighty seven, man. Um, well, guys, thanks for checking out our show. Uh, thanks for hanging with us. We appreciate y'all being on here. Uh, I'm going to be on Wildcat Sports Talk next week with with Adam and Tim, and Caden's going to also be on with us. So I think we're going to do a little collab show with him next week, which will be cool in lieu of our own show. And then we'll be back for the uh, post game show, um, Kentucky Vanderbilt post game show next week, which is hopefully a win as well. Um, it's a we noon don't... kickoff. I don't like noon kickoffs, by the way. I don't like noon kickoffs either. But what what else could Kentucky Vanderbilt be? You know, um, I don't <laughs> so like it. I don't, I don't either, but, uh, we'll let you guys know about that. Brad, you got anything coming up on the college sports cast end of things? Yeah. I mean, we've got a show tomorrow. Our weekend wrap up show, um, is tomorrow. So we'll be talking about a lot of this same stuff. We won't talk quite as much about the cats because they didn't play, um, one of the biggest games of the weekend. <laughs> the biggest games. Whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, so. We'll talk about the Colorado um, game and the Tennessee Florida game. You know, we'll talk yep. about Bama not looking good. We'll talk about Georgia and South Carolina, um, probably Missouri, Kansas State. You know, some of the bigger games of the day. Um, <clears throat> and then catch us Tuesday night. We'll do our big fuss show. That's where we do um, hot topics and we kind of debate back and forth and we have a fuss. It's called our big fuss show. Um, and then Thursdays our game. Them. So that's kind of our take of college game day where we take, you know, and do our picks on games and stuff. Uh, but you can catch us, College Sportscast, go to YouTube, go to our Facebook page. That's where you can catch us. Um, and uh, we always have a little fun. Well, awesome. Well, thanks again, guys, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Cats get the win. Over Akron, thirty-five to three. It wasn't pretty, but we're three and zero. Oh. That's all we can ask for. And real season let's starts keep, next week. Let's keep winning. Let's keep winning. That's all we can ask for. Let's just keep winning. Just keep winning. Yeah. Cats are three and zero. Oh. Vanderbilt next week. Real season starts. Uh, I'm gonna go watch the rest of this Colorado Colorado State game, Brad. Hopefully the Buffs can come back and pull out the win. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, Josh Hartz is a uh, great show as always. You have a good one doing that post game shows with you all. Um, well, thanks, Josh. Uh, we appreciate it. Appreciate it, Josh. Thanks for always uh, listening. We c- we can't do it without you all. You know, we w- if we didn't have an audience, there'd be no reason to do the show. So thanks, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. But um, well, uh, I for one am tired. It's been it's been an exhausting day watching all these upsets. So, <laughs> uh, almost said for Coleman Scott and Caden Holmes, but for Coleman Scott and Brad Harvey, um, this has been the, the, the Talking Kentucky Post Game Show, and we will see you all next week. Go Cats! And uh, yeah, that's all there is to be said, right? Go Big Blue. Go Big Blue. All right, see y'all later. Thank you very much.